Wow, we completed this journey together. 21 days, day 21 of 21 days that will change your life. Part four, be bold in, from the book, Holy Moments, a handbook for the rest of your life by Matthew Kelly. Thank you to those of you who have subscribed, liked, and shared. Be bold. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? I know I asked you already earlier, but you have had more time to consider things now. We are all confronted sooner or later with two of life's questions. Are you going to be satisfied with your life as it is now? Are you satisfied with the direction of the world is moving in? Let me ask the questions again. Are you satisfied with your life? Are you satisfied with the direction that the world is moving in? The mere fact that the questions are emerging is usually solid indication that we are dissatisfied with both to some degree. It's time to listen to that dissatisfaction. Don't swat it aside like an annoying fly. Go deep into your distract, this dissatisfaction. It is a profound messenger that comes to reveal your future. Be bold and mighty forces will come to your, to your aid. That was an observation. Boldness is a beautiful thing. When we see boldness alive in another person, it is incredibly attractive. There is power in boldness. The power of, to explore new possibilities and the power to get unstuck. It is time to move beyond our timidity and boldly participate in each moment of life. Boldness requires a single clear priority. Boldness is single-minded. You cannot boldly pursue many things, thus recklessness. And the two should never be confused. Too often we are bold when we should be timid and timid when we should be bold. Holy moments require boldness. The world needs a massive outpouring of goodness. It needs the healing tonic of goodness, the holy moments release. But the culture is so resistant to goodness. So in order to unleash the tidal wave of goodness needed to heal the culture, we need to be more, we need to be bold. When you are afraid, build confidence and momentum, one small holy moment at a time. You can do small things boldly, and boldness is compatible with patience. Momentum will build fast enough, and once your efforts to create holy moments gathers a little momentum, momentum, it will look bold and unstoppable to others. But you will know that it was small and fragile when it began be bold and mighty forces will come to your aid it's time to awaken the greatness of the human spirit within you and nothing will awaken the greatness god has placed within you like holy moments you were made in the image of god act accordingly jesus told a parable that has been a guiding star for me over the past 30 years the parable is about a farmer who goes out to sow seeds in his field. He sows his seed boldly and generously. Some of the seeds falls on the path, some falls in the shallow rocky soil, some falls among the thorns, but some of the seed falls in the richest soil and produces a bountiful harvest. The harvest is 30, 60, and 100 times times what was sown. Holy moments have those kinds of returns. The danger is to overthink and complicate our efforts. For a long time, I thought the different types of soil were different people, but over time I have grown in awareness and become less judgmental. The truth is most people, most people's hearts have a little bit of each type of soil. We each have the capacity for great good and for great evil. We get to choose. When I look back on my life, 
I see that so many people generously sow goodness in my heart, into my heart. They fill my life with holy moments. Many of them probably thought they had wasted their time on me. But here I am, and I would not be here today if not for their generosity. I am part of their butterfly effect. Though most of them are unaware of it, you are benefiting from their holy moments also, even though you will never meet or know them. There are many critics in my life. I never imagined you could have so many critics in an effort to do good. I was naive and I do get discouraged. But by some grace, I have learned to find inspiration everywhere I go. Besides, consider the other options. Should I give in to the cynics, skeptics, and critics? And the selfishness, hopelessness, and hatred they spread everywhere they go? I will not. Every age has tyrants, and each of us has to decide to face them or cower to them. Meaninglessness and hopelessness are two of the tyrants that, tor that torment the people of this age. They perpetuate the madness that has a grip on so many people. They may seem overwhelming, even invincible, but I will not lose hope for I know they are not. My reasons are very simple. Each holy moment offers someone a path out of the madness and demonstrates the beauty of what is possible. Holy moments have the power to bring the tyrannies of meaninglessness and hopelessness to an end. Holy moments hold the power to set people free from meaninglessness and hopelessness, to live rich and purpose-filled lives. Critics are quickly forgotten, and I simply refuse to underestimate God. So what am I going to do? I will press on. I'm going to keep sowing holy moments in my own imperfect way. Everywhere I go, with every person I meet, every chance I get, reminding myself daily what the Messiah is indeed among us. The critics will say, but so much of the seed doesn't fall on rich ground. They are right, but they are missing the point because you never know whose heart the next handful of seeds will fall into. And you never know what the person will go on to do with his or her life. So I'm going to keep sowing generously. The last question is, what are you going to do? If you would allow me to make a recommendation, do your part. Start sowing holy moments everywhere you go. Join me. Join others. Be part of the be, be part of a grassroots movement that is changing lives and transforming the world one holy moment at a time. Do what you can, where you are, with what you've got and trust that others, hundreds of them, thousands of them in every town, suburb, village, and city across the United States and around the world will do what they can do, what, what they can. And together we will unleash such a force of goodness that people will marvel and wonder how it happened. Your holy moments can have an enormous impact. So do your part. When people do their part, miracles happen. I have been, I have seen these miracles. An outstanding ripple effect is set in motion when people simply decide once and for all to do their part. This holy moments movement that is emerging is a perfect example. How did all this happen? People will ask. It's a miracle. Others will say they will be right. They will be right. But it's a very specific type of miracle. It's the type of miracle that is guaranteed to happen when a bunch of people get together, decide enough is enough, and commit to doing their part. So decide today, once and for all, 
that each day for the rest of your life will have a positive impact. Decide to be the difference that makes the difference. Decide that your part, however small, will not be left undone. Decide to light a candle rather than curse the darkness. Decide to collaborate with God to create holy moments and decide to share the wisdom of holy moments as far and wide as possible and do it boldly. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed holy moments. It is a privilege to read for you. I hope it nourished you in the ways you needed it to be fed at this time in your life. And thank you, Mr. Matthew Kelly, for all the holy moments that you have created in my life because I have read a lot of your books. And let's continue to, to keep pressing, to take the challenge and live one holy moment at a time every day of our lives. Well, thank you so much. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe, like, and share. And I will be reading other books that will help us to continue the quest for holy moments.